Okay, guys, we're going to do something kind of fun today. I know a lot of you have been with me for a really long time, um, but a lot of you are also new. So um, I wanted to introduce myself a little bit and then talk a little about love. So um, where do I start? Okay, so what I do is I consider myself just an intuitive spiritual teacher and a healer. I use Qigong, but it's very similar to Reiki or anything you might be more familiar with. Um, And I am also an animal communicator, pet psychic, whatever you want to call it. So I can feel into anything that you have questions about, anything, any kind of uh, decision making you have to do or even um, I have a lot of authors that want to know, like, what what little extra something can I put in my book or what is it missing to really give it that little extra something special? And so I'll feel into intuitively, like, what makes that book a hit or, or that to- type of thing. Um, I've worked with Nobel Peace Prize winners, um, even coming up with, with some of their philosophies and things. And I've worked with, you know... Producers, directors, singers, uh, actors, golfers, uh, you you name it. And um, so, you know, I just have a very, very wide range of people who who come to me for just about anything you can possibly think of <laughs> and all over the world. So, and I've been doing this for for years, for years. And I started in a little um, a little coffee shop in Granbury, Texas. Um, giving free readings for tips and I would just go in on Fridays and sit at a table with a little sign that said you know free readings um, for tips and (laughs) then I started doing psychic fairs and um, my reputation just kept building and I became like a Qigong practitioner and um, would just do work on on um, clearing blockages and things like that. And I would get all these messages that I would give people. I don't know. It's just an evolution as we all are, you know? Um, So, and I have certain certifications and other things I'm not certified in. So, you know, I always, I always say you get, you know, in this industry, you got to say that this is for entertainment purposes only not to be taken seriously whatsoever. I like to say that because for those Sue happy people (laughs) who think, you know, whatever. It's like, this is just what's coming to me. It's just a creative process. And this is just what's coming to me. And you learn to trust it more all the time. And I do plan to do another video on how you guys can listen to your own intuition better. Because a lot of you are asking me that right now. And I really want to help you be able to do that, especially in these uncertain times, you have to be able to listen to your gut. And honestly, I would say a key to that would just be to be confident in the messages that you receive. Because once you're over that hurdle, you're pretty good. You know, you just get better and better at that. But you, you've got to take yourself seriously. And the things that you see, the little tiny hints and subtle things that you pick up on really are the blaringly obvious things um, that, you, you know, it's, it's much more subtle, I think, than people realize. <clears throat> so you just gain confidence in that over time. So anyway. I wanted to, my two, my two things that I've specialized in through this time or what spirit told me that was going to be my thing is celebrities and true love. Um, that now those can go together, together and they often do, but um, it's the, those are, those are the things that, um, yeah, <laughs> those are the things I kind of specialize in, I guess you could say the things I know a lot about and the things that um, that I'm helping people with, also people who are about to become famous are about to become really well known in their industry for what they do, and I prepare them for for that success and the kinds of uh, traps they could fall into and things like that. So I get you, I get you ready to become famous as well Um, because a lot of you will be. And I don't say famous as if it's an end result. It just means famous like you're going to be well known. And that comes with a lot of challenges in itself. It really does. I mean, just being in the limelight is hard enough. And then, you know, if you've got paparazzi or everybody looking up to you thinking you're the most incredible thing in the world and you're, you're not thinking the same thing as they are, you know, it can be a delusional thing. It can get you depressed. I mean, there's so there's so many things that happen when you become really well known. Well known is probably a better way to say it than than even famous, because who cares about being famous? I mean, 
<clears throat> there are just as many horrible things about being famous as there are good things. So um, I think the ultimate goal um, is to actually be totally, completely at peace and one with God, um, allowing yourself to be used for his will. You know, and I say God, like group of deities, spirit of the universe, however you, whatever your relationship to God is, <clears throat> uh, I've been enlightened before, uh, two or three times now. <laughs> I've gone to the 5D, so I know what that's like to actually be kind of, it's, it's, it's not like being human. It's a really, really unique experience. And I did it naturally without any drugs or anything. So I have that knowledge also that it's, it's I wouldn't say that's my niche because I've been told it's not my niche, but it, it does definitely give me a really good advantage, a really good um, eagle eye viewpoint on life and, and how what we're truly capable of if we really empower ourselves and know who and what we truly are. So having said all of that, <laughs> I want to talk about the true love journey and typically, typically like how it goes. And I've been doing this for years and, and I've probably talked to I don't, thousands of people, thousands, I'm sure. Um, so, and I, you know, at the Lighthouse Bookstore, the Lighthouse Bookstore is known for their psychics. People from all over the world flock there to, you know, who's the psychic and, they want to know and they want to come get a reading and it might be 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, but they get a taste of what it is to talk to like a real psychic, a good quality, authentic psychic. You, you know, they're usually pretty good quality psychics there. So um, I was their featured psychic for like three, four years and I won awards for it. The best of Boulder psychic um, for three consecutive years in a row, including 2020. So um, Yeah. So having said all of that, like I said, I'm going to describe the true love journey the way that I've been seeing it and witnessing it and knowing that sometimes every once in a while, um, it's a shortened version of the long version, but here's basically what happens. <laughs> and there are different types of true love. And I have a video on that, but it's a little bit outdated. So I just thought it'd be good to kind of uh, give a new perspective. Okay. So... A couple of people meet, and this is not a gender specific thing, but a couple of people meet, whether they're the same sex, opposite sex, whatever it is, but they meet and it is a, almost like a precious moment. It is, it is, it is like, wow, this person, like they get me. There's, you can even, there's something in your eyes where you feel like there's history there, yet you know that there's not. You just met this person but maybe you feel like you've known them forever and there's just this instant rapport and trust and you just feel like you belong with this person. And it's so intense and incredible. And if you get the opportunity to make love to the person, it's like the most incredible experience you've ever experienced. So it tends to really um, stick. It really sticks in your, in your brain as being like, wow, that was one of the most incredible meet cutes that I've ever experienced. Um, so what happens is one of those people are ready for a relationship or they think they are, or they're like all going home about it. And they're like, okay, well, let's start getting to know each other. Let's start going on dates. Let's start, you know, they're, they're eagerly anticipating going forward. And the other person says, oh my God, um, every relationship I've ever been in has never been even close to this. Like, like on a scale of one to 10, this is like an eight to 10. And what I've had before has been like three or four and, and the three or fours devastated me. So what would happen because they don't, they're, they're ultimately pretty skeptical that this whole thing's going to end well. So they're, they're like, they jump ahead and go, no, 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 eight or 10. Uh, no, because if, and I'm not talking about a scale of attraction or any of that stuff. It's more like what they feel for you and the connection you guys have. So they get scared to death pretty much that it's ultimately going to end like everything else does. And when it does, they're going to want to commit suicide or something horribly drastic. Like, like they can't handle it. They can't possibly go through that and lose you. So, it, and it's just, this has been going on for a very, very, very long time since like, I don't know I, if it goes back to the stone ages, but probably. <laughs> so... One of them runs away and becomes what we call a runner. Now, it could be a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. In romantic comedies, it seems to, to like, the, like the man is always the chaser. So the man, they're always 
make the man out to be the divine feminine. I don't, you know, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's pretty opposite actually of real life. So from what I've seen, most, the majority of divine feminines are usually um, the feminine. Am I getting it mixed up? Oh, well, you know what I'm talking about. It's usually, it's usually the divine feminines that are more ready for a relationship and more mature and more intuitively developed and all that stuff. So they're ready. They're, they're like ready to go. And then the masculines are like, Oh my gosh, that person's too mature for me. They put them up on a pedestal and they think, well, they're just in some kind of fantasy bubble about me. Like they don't know once they know the real me, they will not have anything to do with me. And I'm going to ultimately get rejected. And this whole thing's going to blow up in my face and it's going to destroy me, my career, everything that I've ever, everything. Right. So what happens is they go into a phase called the separation period. <clears throat> the separation, can, it depends. The, now, this is where it all varies quite a bit because it's, it, a lot of it is up to the masculine, but the feminines might be pretty immature too. So they're, they're like, there's, there's a more mature version of the divine masculine and a more mature version of the divine feminine. The more they come into their power, the, the sooner they can come into what's called union. That means the relationship finally comes together and they date and get to know each other. And it actually starts going forward into what seems like a real relationship. And I only say that because sometimes they can go back and forth. But so, um, and it's all dependent on how ready and how mature they truly are. So they may have some deep wound that needs to get healed. They may have to face the fact that they were sexually molested. I, I, you know, as rare as we act like it, it, that is, I have to tell you guys, I'm saying it in this video for maybe the first time I've ever said this, but I've got to be really honest with you guys. Almost every single person that I talk to has been sexually molested. Almost everybody. If you're watching this video and you haven't been sexually molested, that's really rare. That just, I mean, I don't even know if I've seen if I've seen that happen. Everybody ultimately admits to me they've had something like that happen. But our society is always acting like, oh, well, that just doesn't, you know, that's, oh, they were sexually molested. Like, like, like that's something rare or something different. No, 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 no. That person who said that probably has been molested even. And they're just not admitting it. Or they haven't remembered it because their memories got wiped away because they went into denial and kind of blocked it out. So we're like these injured people, you know, wanting to be loved by this other person and accepted by this other person. But also one thing the masculine doesn't realize is the feminine's been through all the stuff they've been through. Maybe not the exact same stuff, but they've been through as, as many things or they feel as bad about themselves about having made certain decisions or been involved in certain things in their history that they could also kind of say, well, once he knows all that, there's no way in hell he's going to love me. So they both have these same dynamics that need healing in each other, but they found each other for a reason. And now there's also, I just want to say that I've mentioned this couple that met and that's how the meet cute happened. <clears throat> but for some of you, it's actually online and especially in the celebrity world, this happens online more often than you would think where um, one of them sees the other and there's just this, oh my gosh, I feel like I know this person and, and this just feels so natural. And it's beyond being a fan. I'm not talking about some kind of fantasy bubble. I wish I could be with that person because I would do all this and blah, 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 blah. It's not wanting something from them. And it's also not making them out to be this perfect person that's like, just like they are in the movies or in their show or whatever they're doing or the, or, you know, a lot of singers. I have a lot of people who have famous celebrity singers. Um, so, but it's not, it's not like you're like, oh, all infatuated, like a fan would be. It's much more, it's much more mature and much more serious and much more unconditionally loving. And that's the ticket or the key to this whole thing is they're not accustomed to being loved like that. So it scares them both. And by the time that the masculine, after this time of separation, the masculines have to hurt the divine feminine really bad. I mean, it's just inevitable. I've seen it over and over again. And, and, and I'll, I'll be thinking like, oh, okay, well, that they haven't experienced that yet. And boom, it happens. I'm like, okay, there it goes. <laughs> you know, And there's just something in the divine masculine having to having to totally self-sabotage himself or herself and totally like screw the other person over and, and betray them or and do, it's like they have to do something really awful to the person um, that they need forgiveness for. 
and then the divine mask and the, and the divine masculine, there's also usually a big, like a big age difference or a big, um, there's some kind of big difference that their ego has a hard time getting over. Um, it could be that one's way more attractive than the other. It could be that you guys live are maybe you're totally different races or totally different, like live in totally different places, like all across, like across the world from each other. Or maybe, I mean, it's, it's, there's so, I have a video on vast differences and what to do about vast differences, but so the masculines go over here and they basically go date a karmic or something and get like treated like crap by somebody who, you know, really lures them in and seems to have all the things that they're looking for and then snatches them and then wants all their money and wants this. I mean, they go in there pr pretty greedy and they become like these psychopaths or sociopaths that don't care at all about them. And they eventually have to find their worth and their value enough to leave that unhealthy situation and come back to the person that they were dreaming of the whole time they were with that one. So they go with the karmic and they're thinking of their divine feminine or they find out about their divine feminine while they're with the karmic. Um, and it's just this thing that becomes like it festers. Like if I was with this person, they would treat me right. Why can't you treat me like this one would treat me? And so they have to get to the point where they stand up to the karmic and they say, I'm not putting up with being, tr being treated like this anymore. They gain self-esteem, they gain confidence, they mature, and they realize that they're worth better than that, right? Well, the feminines over here, they go through their abandonment issues because they've been abandoned in their lives. And they're just like, I can't believe he left me. I can't believe like all this was going so great. And they bailed and went with some karmic or you know, we had this incredible connection. They didn't even want to date me. Like, what the heck? Or, you know, they, they just go through all this, like, what's wrong with me? Is it because I was have this wrong with me? Or I have that wrong with me? And you never, the, the feminines, you don't have, you're perfect. You're perfect. And that's the problem. It's not that you're a perfect person. It's like you're perfect for him. And it scares the dude out of him for the reasons that I said before. So then the feminines go through, well, please talk to me. And they put out these like romantic memes and they like, I will always love you. The moment we met, I will never forget. And they throw out all these, like what I call pings, like putting it out seeing if it comes back on your masculine's end. Like maybe he'll post a story or maybe he'll post a post that kind of, you guys are playing ping pong a little bit with each other, kind of like letting each other know. Yeah, I, I do love you. I'm just taking some distance right now. Um, but they sometimes not always, there's like a, a pinging back and forth between these people, just letting them know, I, I still love you. I still want to be with you. Um, and you don't always get that, but whatever the, whatever the case is, the divine feminines are, are, they'll call sometimes or they'll send a text and hey, just thinking about you or just remembering this or how you doing, you know, they'll, they'll make all this effort sometimes for years and the divine masculine just completely ghosts them because they're involved in this horrible karmic relationship they're really embarrassed about. They feel terrible and guilty for the way that they've treated you and the way they've left you out in the cold. Um, and they know that if they were to describe their circumstances to you and maybe the money that they've lost or that maybe that they're, you know, all of those insecurities that they go through make them ghost the divine feminine, which is why I have my video is called um, does he really love me? Cause he's totally ghosting me. That's one of the videos you'll probably want to watch as well. Um, but when the divine feminine gets in her power and she finally gets really fed up and she's like, I don't care if this happens. I ultimately have finally gotten to a point where I really just don't care if this happens. If it happens, it would be just wonderful. I think it would, but I'm going to let go of any expectations and I'm even going to invite the possibility of somebody else coming through because I believe in the law of attraction. I believe I've been a good person doing my healing, keeping my vibration high as best I can. I've been going it alone. I've been, you know, building, you know, trying to get out of debt and doing everything that, you know, the divine feminines can do to become totally in their power and self-sufficient and strong. And a lot of times they're, they're kind of resentful that their masculine wasn't there to help build them and wasn't there to help them, you know, reassure them through tough times like we're going through. And all of this, they, they got to go through all of this evolutionary process. But basically what they do is they do this separately, looking over at each other, dreaming of each other. And as much as they're refusing it and as much as they're saying no, they're also kind of being sucked into it magnetically. And the more both of them say, I am worth better than this. I'm worth better than this. And I, I want, this is what I want. I want a harmonious relationship 
I mean, there's going to be stress in every relationship. There's going to be triggers, but I want something where we work together as a team, where we both want the same things, where we both work together toward those goals. And we both are like essentially have each other's backs. That's what I want. And I deserve that. And now I didn't have to deserve it by doing good. You know, maybe I've done rotten things or been a horrible person my whole life or done like even killed somebody like really bad stuff. Like, you know, nobody is undeserving of love. Nobody. But they get to the point where they're just finally they can accept that. They're like, I live in the moment now. I live in the moment. The past does not make any difference at all to me because I am living here now where I really have my power and where I really am who I authentically am. I'm tired of being fake. I'm tired of having to people please other people or do what they say in order for me to look good or for me to keep my reputation or, you know, all that, all the facades and all the masks drop away and they become authentically empowered, independent and self-sufficient, self-reliant. When both of those people have gotten to that point, and I also believe if they've gotten to the point where they can apologize, you know, it's about taking um, self, it's like being able to self-reflect, be self-aware and, and personally responsible enough that you guys could get in an argument and you would come to the table, not with na 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 but more like, you know what, I've stepped back, I've looked at this, and I see that I've contributed this part, and I'm sorry for my part. And then the other person comes in and says something similar. You know, or, oh, wow, that really hurt me. Oh, my gosh. But I, I had to take a minute and take a breather, so let's talk about it. You know, they're, they're much more willing to, to not just jump at you with revenge, and I will get you, and I'll do the same thing. You know, it's not going to be as immature as it was with the karmic tit for tat and anger and just, I mean, there's get, there's going to be anger moments and stuff like that, but you guys get to the, to a point where you're willing to look at yourselves and want to heal. Basically you get to the, to the point where you're like, this is the person that I can heal with, not continue to injure each other, not continue to make it way worse and make a toxic situation, like fool myself into thinking that a toxic situation, like with the karmic, um, you know, that that could be something healthy eventually because it won't. And it's a bad example to your children. You know, some of the masculines are, you know, they have children and they're involved with these really toxic people and they're seeing the fake and phony stuff and they're going to start mimicking that eventually. And they're going to see their dad or their mom getting walked all over by this horrible person who's just shouting orders at them or just dismissing them completely. So, um, yeah, when they're when they are in their power, when they come into their power and they finally are just like this, you know, I want what I want and I'm not going to settle for anything less. And I just I don't like this treatment. So I'm not even going to I'm not even going to give it my time and energy anymore until we're ready to actually have a good heart to heart talk. And then the, when the heart to heart talk happens, um, it's it's important that they both come to the table with their apologies and they come to the table with their complete honesty as best they can. You know, a lot of the masculines, they're not used to this level of authenticity, you know, but somehow it's funny because they, they'll get with their divine feminine and they'll be like thinking, Oh, I'll say this or when I won't say that, but, and then they'll prep and everything, but they'll get before their divine feminines and just be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they don't even, like they don't, I've talked to these guys after they talk to their feminines and they're like, I ha- had no idea that I was going to rattle off all that I did. So that's essentially what happens. And when both of them can get on the same page and have a good heart to heart talk about where they're at, where they're going some couples decide this isn't the time for me right now. This isn't it for me right now. Like, I really love you. I do. And I genuinely will for the rest of our lives. But I just think that, um, it, you know, I want to stay with my partner or I want to date this new person or that they might decide to go different ways, but they, it's 111. My phone just lit up with a notification and it's 111. <laughs> That's another thing is you see all kinds of signs and synchronicities. Thank you for that little nudge. You see lots and lots of different signs and synchronicities that constantly remind you of the other person too. Okay, so what I was just describing is the is the twin flame dynamic, is the typical twin flame dynamic. And it's my own take on it. You know, other people will talk about the souls being divided and being two different, you know, and then uh, all that whole thing. 
I don't know about the whole souls being divided thing. I, since I've seen a lot of death and I've seen how animals die and they pop right back into another animal and they reincarnate and it's like death is like nothing. You just like go down and then you come up in another body. <laughs> it's like no big deal. I've kind of observed that when now we're going into the second category, that was the twin flames, the soul flames is what I'm going to get into now. What happens is the divine uh, masculine has a window of time where he has his opportunity with his feminine, basically. If he comes to a point where he's not willing to let go of the ego to go to the next stage, you know, if he if he just clings to his like, no, I can't, you know, I can't do this thing because it's going to ruin my family or they, they just can't get their minds open enough to want to make a dramatic change in their life to be with their true love, then they essentially kind of close the door on that opportunity. And now what happens is what seems to me what happens is the energy that was in the the original twin flame that kind of lit them up on fire to want to be with each other, all this passion is ignited. That energy goes now into the next person most naturally drawn to love you. And so that becomes the soul flame, a soul flame. And there can be many, 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 a long, long line of them. So now that energy never leaves the twin flame, but it's it's kind of like when you take a wick and you have a candle and then you light another candle with it and another candle. The more rejections the feminine gets from these masculines, then it lights a fire for a soul flame to come through. Then the soul flame gives it his go and he's, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. She's you know, going to ultimately reject me. I can't do it. Then it goes to the next soul flame. Oh, no, no, I can't. I'm not worthy. I can't do it. Oh, my gosh, I don't have enough money. Money is everything. My whole world is money. I can't I can't go open my heart. I've been hurt before. And that gets closed. It goes to the next soul flame. And it becomes like a similar song and dance with the runner chaser dynamic. And then, you know, there's the whole separation. They go through all the phases I just described all over again, but with a different person. And this keeps happening for the feminines until a masculine steps it up until a masculine actually is bold and brave and courageous enough to face his fears, to heal and to, to want to embrace this type of love. Um, for the masculines, they're always going to feel like that's the one that got away. They're always going to regret it. And they're always going to feel like, I can't believe, like if they stay stuck in their karmic situation or, or they just, or they decide, Oh, that got too scary. I'm going to dodge over here and go take this another karmic. <laughs> Um, the masculines don't earn a real true love until they decide to truly love themselves and be empowered. So they're always going to go from karmic to karmic, to, from pain to pain to pain to pain. And all that stuff that they're fearing, they're actually producing more of it. Like the, the painful breakup they were anticipating with their divine feminine happens with the karmic, not with the divine feminine. The divine feminines, they, you guys will love each other for the rest of your lives. There's not, you know, that you don't have to worry about losing that person like ever. But because of their fear and their insecurities and their, um, you know, the lack of love for themselves and standing up for themselves and valuing themselves, they go to, from one bossy relationship to another to another. But the feminines, they keep going from, from um, they, it seems that each soulmate that they choose is even more mature. And it keeps going like that as well. Um, the feminines do, you can eventually get over your original twin flame and soul flames. If you choose somebody and you become totally loyal and faithful to them and you truly pick them. If you, if, if you say, you know what, I've taken a look at it all. These guys have never really gotten anywhere with me. They've never really done anything. They've never really showed up like I was hoping that they would. They all seem to have closed the door. And, you know, they may have the fear that this number one, first original twin flame is going to pop up any minute and they're going to be like, Oh shit. Cause I have all this passion and love for this person. And what am I going to do? Cause this person is just not the same history and it's not the same, all of, all of that. But um, I have known feminists that chose this number five person. Let's say they chose the number five person and they truly are able to let that go. And the signs and synchronicities do start to fade. But otherwise, in the meantime, she's like inundated with signs and synchronicities for all five guys. But this one finally showed up. And this one was the knight in shining armor who said, I deserve this. I love myself. I don't want to keep going through this repetitive cycle of abuse and shame and anger and all of that stuff. I want to heal. They have to choose to want to be healed. 
Um, and then w once you find that that person jives with you, you guys are talking the same language. You guys both want commitment. You both want to heal. You both are mature enough. Um, then it goes forward. Or, you, I mean, some, some feminines then move on to like the next category. <laughs> it's called a soulmate. Now, I think uh, what I feel a soulmate is, is just somebody who's just really easy and comfortable to get along with immediately. Like maybe you guys met when you were 16. You've known each other your whole lives. You know the person like the back of your hand. There's, there's, you know, maybe you've always known that they love you and you just weren't ready for it or something. Or maybe like, um, maybe you just meet this person and they just immediately um, are just like, wow, I like a puppy dog. You know, like I really want to be with you. And I really like, like, let's do this. And they, they're all about family and they, they, and they're incredible catches, incredible catches, super successful people with plenty of money and they got a house and they got everything to offer that some people want <laughs> or whatever it is that you want. Maybe you, you want, like, you know, whatever it is you want. They, he's got the best tent. He's got everything going on for him that you would want. Um, but it's really easy and comfortable really easy and comfortable. There's no, no back and forth, any, any kind of growth, any kind of anything. So it can get boring. It sometimes, you know, some feminines who've been with a, a soulmate for many years are just bored out of their minds or they're still thinking about their, their masculine because they're so bored. <laughs> or maybe the sex isn't as great and that's not always the case. And there are some like, there are some more karmic type soulmates and there are also some more twin flamey type soulmates. So there's like a range in there. But, um, and, but whenever I hear somebody talk about how they feel about somebody, I can tell pr pretty quick whether it's like on the twin flame side or the soulmate side. And so these are some of the d decisions the divine feminine has to make. Do, do I want to kind of feel like I'm settling with the soulmate or some people settle or go with the soulmate and it's not even necessarily settling if it's really healthy and happy and you guys are content. And if you're living present in the moment, then that's an ideal situation for you. That's not real triggering. You know, so you may be really fed up with all this. Maybe you've gone through so, like a twin flame and several soul flames and you're just like, I'm so sick and tired of these guys not actually coming to the plate. Like none of them actually want to go forward and date and be vulnerable and, you know, heal and stuff. So they, so they may choose a soulmate because it's easy. It's a lot easier. Okay. So there is also what's called a false twin flame. My definition of, of a false twin flame is over, overly simplistic, but I just, I, I, th I think I'm right on. I think I am. And basically what that is, is you discover the person's a psychopath or a sociopath and they have no kindness. They have no compassion. They pretend that they do. They're good actors, but they're, they don't, they, that you even have the signs and synchronicity or so it seems like your perfect match. So you're like your, your total prince charming. But as you get to know them, you see that they're just, totally void of compassion. And that is not somebody you want to be with. So I say the minute they look like they don't have compassion or kindness in them, get rid of them. That's, that's your false twin flame. And I only say, I mean, I would say that that's a karmic and it could be a karmic, but if it involved a bunch of signs and synchronicities and all that kind of stuff, it's probably a, a you know, a false twin flame. Like you thought they were your twin flame, but so it had a similar energy and it had a similar power and passion and <coughs> draw and the back and forth stuff. Um, and there's one more. Love at first sight. I don't know a lot about this one. I don't know a lot about this one, but <clears throat> it's similar, but it's, but it's like, um, it's I probably, I would say, is it true that some of the soul flames can be love at first sight? Yes. Okay. So it's not necessarily in a category of its own. It's more of a phenomenon. It's like you meet somebody and you've never met them or you don't even know who they are, anything, complete stranger. And all of a sudden you're staring into the face of somebody you already love, like madly in love with this person. And you have no idea how you could feel that way the second you meet them. So, um, yeah, and, and I haven't really seen a pattern with how that goes necessarily. So I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm honest with you guys. <laughs> and I'm not, you know, that's not really a pattern that I've seen happen very commonly. And it's not, it's also not something that I've seen play out 
Um, if you guys have had that love and love at first sight thing, please feel free to comment below and give me some information on how that turned out, how that worked out. Um, I, I know of somebody who had that happen and nothing ever really came of it. So I don't, I'm not saying that they're all like that. Cause obviously I don't have enough information about that, but, um, but it's, it's pretty powerful when it happens and it tends to stick in your head too. So <laughs> the whole idea, and I've met divine feminines who didn't have me or somebody like me to explain how this journey goes. They're so angry and they make themselves out to be victims. That is the last thing you guys want to do. If you are angry at your person, if you're the masculine or the feminine, and either of you are angry or resentful of each other, then the objective is to always heal, 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 heal. I mean, I always recommend Byron Katie's work. I have a video that I've done on that if you want to look it up. Byron Katie is B-Y-R-O-N-K-A-T-I-E. It's phenomenal. It, it's very effective and fast and simple to learn and to start doing every day. Um, and it really releases you of stressful thoughts, uh, which is the only thing that's really going to make you struggle. The other one is, um, the other exercise I recommend is thank you God for my misery. And I did a video on that one. If you want to look that one up too, both are really powerful for healing. Um, but whatever your healing thing is, do that as long as it's effective, as long as it's actually working and you're letting go of the anger and resentments. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much that's pretty much the scoop is that it's all about healing and all about stepping into your power, and you know um, you can in and letting go and getting that ultimate step where you're just like I don't care, I don't care if it happens anymore, I don't care if he calls, I don't care if he comes anymore, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> you you want to get there because you're just like I'm going to be okay, I'll be all right. I'll be okay. Like God will provide. He'll provide for my needs. He'll provide my sexual, whatever I, those needs. He'll provide, you know, everything is in due time and everything is coming to me because I have been doing my healing and staying in the positive vibration, the law of attraction guarantees I will have the love of my life. If it's not going to be you, then it's going to be the next guy in line, I guess. You don't want it to be because you're so madly in love with that person and they've really, really, really let you down and almost destroyed you, but you got to keep going on. You got to keep going on and you got to keep letting go. And both of you have to know your worth. And when you do that, this is another thing. When you get to that point where you're just like, I don't care anymore. I want to be valued. I want to be treated well. I want to be the priority. I want to be at the top of the list or around the top of the list. I want to be given to. I want to be, I want to be fertilized. You know, I don't want any more, like any more of the, I was going to say manure, but you know, I don't, I don't want to be the treated like the weeds over here. I, I want to be the flowers that are tended to and snipped and given the attention and the adoration. You know, when you get to that point, guess what that does to your masculine's energy? Because you guys will, you guys are tied together energetically. Um, it's going to also cause the same thing to happen for him and vice versa. It's going to help him let go of the karmic and say, I deserve better. I don't care what you have to say anymore. I don't care the song and dance you're doing. I don't care about all the drama and all the crap. I'm done. I'm out of here. I want to be happy. <laughs> I want to be with the person who will love me right. I want the person who will love me unconditionally and stick by my side through thick and thin and no matter what the hell goes on and isn't after my money and isn't after all the attention and whatever else they're trying to get. I see through you. I see it. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want the real deal. The one I've been fantasizing about. This is the masculine speaking. Because while he's with the karmic, he's thinking of you. And ultimately wanting you, wishing he could deserve you. But he, he you know, both of you get to the point of, of, of getting what you deserve when you finally let go. And just trust God. And just trust the law of attraction works, because it does. Um, and it may take time. And don't be giving up on the law of attraction or don't be giving up on the whole process or your healing if it doesn't happen according to your humanly time, you know, everything is perfectly divinely timed. And it's supposed to happen exactly when it does. 
And I just felt one of you say, well, what happens if one, one through five comes, you know, and that does happen. So I've heard some feminines go through all of them showing up at the same time. Um, and they're like horrified by that because they're, they love all of them in different ways. And they're, they're like ready to go forward with any of them. <laughs> and it's just like, they're just like, how could it, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to tell this one, no and say yes to that one. Um, but if you, if you come to that point, you're just going to have to go on these dates or get to know them, talk to them on the phone or whatever. And I would just go with the one who is the most kind, the one who's the most sincere, the one who's most authentic, the one who can apologize and the one that you feel comfortable being yourself with. You could break something or spill something or do something really stupid and they're going to laugh and they're going to give you a big hug and a kiss on your forehead and it's going to be okay. They're not going to give you a hard time and scream and yell at you or all of a sudden you're some kind of an enemy or something like that. They're not going to jump to conclusions and think that you're running out on them or like, you know what I mean? The drama, it's not going to be so dramatic. It's going to be more, um, more mature and it's going to be, it's going to, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel good going into it. Choose that person over whatever the other people are doing. Listen to your intuition because some of those other people end up being people who want to come back around to use you. They see an opportunity. They see, you know, I just talked about the golden egg, I think in the last messages from spirit or something, but okay. So um, I'm trying to figure out whether I want to do, hmm, I think I do. I think this, this might be a little bit of a long one. So I'm just going to get some random messages from spirit in addition to this. Because I feel like spirit has something to say here. Yeah, look for peace and harmony chimes. Look for, for peace. And we want peace and harmony going forward into the new earth. And you guys are the power couples. And you guys, you guys get it the worst, too, because it's like the dark side really doesn't want you guys happening. Because you guys are going to be really good examples. Psychic ability. Trust your intuition. When it comes to picking the right person, just trust your intuition. Diamond. You'll be receiving or giving a precious gift or maybe get a diamond soon. <laughs> Throne, a position of authority. So some of you are going to be with a celebrity or somebody or you're going to feel like a king or a queen of your own world or just be in that, that, that queen or king type of energy, like really in your power. Like I am on my throne and I have the person who is worthy of being in the next throne next to me. You want to rule your kingdom with somebody who's um, worthy of being in the throne and they know it. They can own it now. You know, they may have been insecure about it for a while that they're not worthy of it, but they got over it. They're like, I don't want to live the rest of my life feeling like I'm unworthy for anything good. <laughs> you know, this is getting ridiculous. I'm finally just going to go give it my best shot. <laughs> you know, that's all you really can do. And there could be hard work involved, but it's going to be a stable foundation. And you guys need to just stick together. I mean, I've known some true love couples. Like I know one couple that comes to mind that they had to, they had their families battling them for like 19 years. They wouldn't even allow the other person to come to their Christmases and other ridiculous things. They robbed, their families robbed them of happiness for years and, and caused strife and drama and all this awful stuff. They were dreadful to these people, but they loved each other through it. They said, we don't care. We're not going anywhere. We're definitely not going to leave each other. So they had to work through it for like 19 years. Finally, the families finally <laughs> accepted it after that long. So you guys have to be willing to go through whatever it takes. Um, so then when we get the barrel, you feel something is lacking in your life, perhaps love, money, or goals. So if you guys are in that lack mentality, it's time to snap out of it and get in your power. Because you're not going to attract the love of your life if you're begging and pleading and hoping and praying that they're going to come through for you to prove your worth somehow, you know, or to help you pay the rent. If you're in any kind of a desperate situation and you feel desperate for the person or you're, you know, constantly drawing cards on them or con like if it's a desperation type of energy, you're in the wrong energy to be attracting that person. Um, nest, an emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. So don't settle for anything less than this. 
um, you could get, you could jump into the frying pan. There could be trouble and accusations, but there's, they reminding me of the hard work card. You could uh, beware of greed, uh, beware of greed. Some of you, you know, you might be going into a whole new world where there are a lot of things thrown at you here, have this, here, have this, and be, be aware of that manipulation, you know, just be happy with enough to get you by. You don't need more than that. You don't need over the top. You don't need to be able to order people around. You don't need any of that stuff. <clears throat> always stay humble and always remember where you came from and always come back to the simplicity of it all. I love this person. This person loves me. And we we can be happy on $100 a month, whatever, whatever they, you know, just as long as you guys can be together and live somewhere you know, that's all you need. Um, or providing for, your, you know, your child's education or whatever is important for you, but take care of those things or whatever, or strive to do that together. But outside of that, that should be all that matters. Um, so handshake, a meeting with a stranger could be important. Yeah. Well, that's that love at first sight or the twin flame or the soul flame for that matter. Um, hand in need of help or assistance or guidance. So some of you may need to, you know, go to a counselor or something like that, or come to me, or um, you may need to get assistance. Some of you think you're crazy for going through this. <laughs> I tell you guys, like, don't tell your friends and family. They're not, if they don't haven't expressed to you that they've gone through something similar, don't talk to them. They're going to call you crazy, and they're going to, they're going to, yeah. Um, you might be up against a stubborn, aggressive person. Um, they said, don't let them bully you down. Oh, don't let bullies get away with anything too. Sometimes the karmics will try to bully the masculines to try to keep them from going forward. They don't want them to be happy. So like, you're not going to be happy. They're not going to be happy because they're miserable people. They just, they don't have a positive attitude. So they're just not going to be happy. Not ultimately until they start healing and stuff. But, um, and, the, and the, if they ever do, <laughs> a lot of them don't or won't. But um, yeah, if they're like, get, get away from the stubborn, aggressive person and don't take their, if they're blackmailing you, if they're trying to threaten you in any way, or if they say, you did this to me, so you owe me this money or any, any of that. If they're acting like a spoiled brat at all or trying to make demands, do not listen to them at all. Um, and you may have some discord amongst family and friends as you go forward into this because Frankly, you know, true love inspires the hell out of people. At first, though, they might fight it. They'll be like, you guys are an odd couple. You guys should not be together. You need to be with somebody of your caliber or you need to be of somebody, you know, but you need to not listen to them because you guys know your own hearts. And that's where you need to listen to your own intuition and know what's right for you. Nobody else's opinion should matter. So let it, let it cause friction. Let it cause all kinds of problems if it's going to. Your, your objective is not to make everybody happy. Your objective is to be with your true love and be honest with yourself and tell the truth to everyone and be authentic and go after what you truly feel joyful and passionate about, period. Someone who's going to treat you really well. And um, the rest of it can fall to the wayside. And those people who were originally against you guys or tried to go with their own logic, which has really messed them up in their own lives. So why would you listen to it, right? But they, they're going to try to give you all this kinds of advice and everything, and you just don't even listen to them. And eventually, they're going to be inspired by you guys. They're going to be the ones who say, holy crap, like, you, you, you guys were totally right about this. This is amazing how things have, like, lined up for you guys and how wildly successful you are when you got into your venture together. And when you guys started doing this and said that and stood by each other's side, and all, I mean, it's just like it, they might even be brought to tears. And they might decide to change their way. They might say, you know what, maybe this intuition thing is right. Maybe I'm with the wrong person. Maybe I need to be with somebody who really, you know, draws the best out of me and makes me want to fight and stand up for something for once, you know, that kind of thing. Jug, lighthearted, carefree time. So be with that person who really makes you feel like you can be lighthearted and carefree and joke about things and be playful and, and have fun. Um. You are highly thought of, so go with the person also that thinks that thinks highly of you, who who does respect you, who treats you really well, and and feels like you are the catch of the century, you know. And it may be somebody who's older than you, 
or where there's an age difference. Um, there could be temporary problems, but you guys, guys will make it make it through. Just keep praying, keep standing by each other's side, keep communication open, um, and a sincere wish will be granted. So I also feel like when you pray from the heart, pray as if it's already happened as you go along and um, just be yourself. Be yourself with the person. Don't ever lie. Um, what else? This one was like dealings or relationship with a woman will the um, dolphin financial gain usually coming from something you did in the past. So, you know, maybe it's an idea that you came up with in the past, or maybe you guys have even talked about doing it and that you just haven't done it yet. Okay. Delight is coming. Be flexible, flexibility. Be spontaneous, go with the flow, be playful, be deep with each other, catch a vision with one another, get on the same page, see if you want the same things or find out what it is you guys want in common and strive to make that happen. Do it with harmony, do it with complete openness, be responsible, be personally responsible, each of you, make it simple. Um, explore all your options and stay present in the moment and you guys should be good. So, and if you need help navigating any part of that journey or figuring out who somebody is to you um, or how to heal or step in your power, then definitely order a reading from me at amysatori.com forward slash services. And I'd be happy to help you. Um, I guess that's it for today. Anything else? 781. I'm getting the number 781. As long as you stay positive minded, your career and finances will go very well. So maybe that was a little wink or an extra little assurance to somebody who's watching this would probably be a masculine because they're the ones that are too worried about money. But I mean, some feminines are too. So don't worry about the finances, just stay positive and everything will work out. Um, uh, 542. <laughs> 542. Trust that the angels are watching over you as you change your life for the better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys got this. So, um, all right, have yourselves a beautiful day and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share them with your friends. Also, feel free to join me at patreon.com forward slash Amy Satori, where I post monthly energy readings, pick a decks, and other goodies for members only including discounts for readings and being entered to win a free reading at the end of the year. Memberships start as low as $5.55 a month. Sometimes I even put my free collective love readings on Patreon first before uploading them here to YouTube. You can check the description of my videos for the most up-to-date information.